The National Water Carrier of Israel was a mega-project drawn up to redistribute water across the entire land. It was ambitious, technically pioneering, and ultimately essential to the development and prosperity of Israel in the 20th century. The main issue for water scarcity in Israel came from the geographic imbalance of its distribution. Areas in the north of the country, such as the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River Basin, have always been rich in natural water resources, with an annual average of around 40 inches of rainfall. While there had been Bedouin tribes settled here for centuries, it would become vital for Israel's nation-building that a more equitable water source could be put in place to serve the Negev and surrounding areas. Impressively, building took a period of just eight years from 1958 to 1964 to enable the transit of a staggering 450 million cubic meters of water every day. Thousands of workers, engineers and tunneling specialists collaborated for years to find the right solution from Salmon to the Yaakov. That's because the extreme topography of the terrain involved boring through limestone and basaltic rock that can be difficult to navigate through. All of this was a subterranean marvel created underneath the hills with minimum impact to the ecosystem that continues to thrive on top of them. The Eshkol Reservoir, one of the largest in the NWC, holds over 5 million cubic meters of water and was created in a rectangular shape for the same reason. It sits at 400 meters wide at an increased depth of 15 meters. Neighboring countries, including Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, had raised concerns that the activity around the Sea of Galilee would have an effect on the shared water levels of the Jordan River Basin area. Interestingly, it could be said that the appearance of a new technology that would eventually come to use the existing NWC infrastructure went a long way to alleviating the concerns for shared water resource management. Large-scale schemes such as the California Water Project in the United States, the South-North Water Transfer Project of China, and the great man-made river of Libya all owe the National Water Carrier of Israel a debt of thanks for its pioneering use of distribution and drought avoidance techniques. It remains the standard bearer for man's ingenuity in redistributing the most vital element required for development across the widest area possible.